I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about the 2023 GINA Asthma Guidelines. We treat a lot of asthma, and there's some important changes to our care of patients with asthma, particularly around the use of albuterol. There are two main guidelines when it comes to asthma. That is the Global Initiative for Asthma, or GINA Guidelines, and the U.S. NHLBI Guidelines. While I had the privilege of serving on the expert working group for the U.S. Guidelines, what I like about the GINA Guidelines is that they're updated annually, so they allow us to stay up with rapid changes in the field. Today, we're going to focus on assessment and then treatment. We're focusing on assessment because over half of the patients with asthma in the United States are not well controlled, so it's important to assess for asthma control at every asthma visit. Now, asthma has two domains that we should focus on, symptoms and the risk for future exacerbations, and recognize that it is not enough to simply say, how are you doing with your asthma? Because many patients seem to accept symptoms, not realizing that better control can be had by increasing therapy. So we want to have a careful approach to assessment. There are many assessment tools out there. Uh, the Asthma Control Test, or ACT, focuses on symptoms. The new AIRQ assesses both symptoms and risk for exacerbation. The gene assessment is probably the easiest to implement either as a formalized assessment or by questions that you ask. And you simply ask the patient over the last four weeks, have they had daytime symptoms more than twice a week? Any night wakening due to asthma? Use of Saba rescue more than twice a week or any activity limitation due to asthma? Well-controlled asthma is defined as none of these. Partly controlled asthma is one or two of these, or uncontrolled is three to four positive responses. You can't change someone's therapy if you don't know that they're not in good control. So it's important to assess control. You'll notice the GINA questions focus on symptoms. It's important to also ask about previous exacerbations as a predictor of future exacerbations. Let's now go on to treatment. The goals of treatment are to control symptoms and to reduce the risk for future exacerbations. The GINA guidelines emphasize that even patients with mild asthma can have severe or even fatal exacerbations, and that's the rationale for the big change. Since inhaled corticosteroids, ICS, substantially decreases the risk of a severe exacerbation, Gina recommends that all patients with asthma should receive an ICS. To say this a different way, Gina now recommends against treatment with Saba alone, that is against albuterol alone, even in patients with mild disease. Therefore, all adults and adolescents with asthma should receive an ICS either as part of maintenance therapy or whenever Saba is taken. Even for children 6 to 11 years of age with mild asthma, taking ICS whenever Saba is taken is felt to be safer than use of Saba alone. Gina has two tracks. The preferred track uses ICS for Motorol as maintenance and reliever therapy, MART. This used to be called SMART, single maintenance and reliever therapy. Track two, without the use of ICS for Motorol for MART, is also offered and recommended, recognizing that the use of ICS for Motorol for MART is not an FDA-approved use for the medication in the United States. There's an easy-to-follow step care diagram that's worth looking at in the reference link below. For patients who have symptoms less than twice a month, start therapy with step one therapy. Track one is as needed, PRN low dose, ICS for Motorol. Track two is as needed treatment with albuterol, taking an inhaled corticosteroid whenever albuterol is used. For patients with symptoms more than twice a month, but not most days of the week, treatment can start with step two therapy. Tract one, as needed, low dose ICS for Motorol, or tract two, low dose maintenance daily ICS plus as needed Saba. 
an option for rescue therapy for Track 2 and across all steps of therapy is to use ICS whenever SOB is used for rescue in order to decrease the likelihood of exacerbations. If someone has more severe asthma symptoms most days of the week, or their asthma is waking them from sleep once or more a week, then you can start with step three therapy as follows. Track one, low-dose ICS for Motorol as maintenance and reliever therapy, or track two, low-dose ICS LABA plus as needed SABA or as needed ICS SABA. That will take care of most of our patients. As we see people back, if escalation of therapy is needed because they do not have well-controlled asthma, then go on to step four therapy. Track one, medium dose ICS for Motorol used as maintenance and reliever therapy, or track two, medium dose ICS LABA plus as needed SABA or as needed ICS SABA. For those who are still uncontrolled, it's important to realize that step five gives options to add a LAMA, that is a long-acting muscarinic agent. In my experience, this is sometimes very helpful. We can also consider going to high-dose ICS LABA as maintenance. At this step, people have pretty severe, often uncontrolled asthma, and this is where we can also think about checking eosinophil accounts, ordering PFTs if they haven't been done already, and referring to our specialist colleagues for consideration of biologic therapy. It's important to see patients back regularly to assess asthma control. If a patient is not well controlled or has had exacerbations, consider stepping up therapy or changing from albuterol alone when used as rescue to using as your rescue albuterol plus ICS for rescue. If they have been well controlled for a long time, that's when we might consider de-escalation of therapy. I'm interested in your thoughts. Please leave them in the comments below. This is a critically important update for one of the most common things that we regularly see. I'm Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.